Hey, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you, sir. 1222 Central Time. 23 minutes past saying good morning. So uh, here we are. And by the way, that song right there, Ben Fuller, type man on YouTube. It's great, man. It's got great music. A uh, new song called If I Got Jesus. So it's, it's a beautiful song. And by the way, the music video is really, really uh, pretty. Yeah, Ben Fuller. Never heard of him, but he sounds great. Yes, you, you'll know him on this song. I used to play this one um, a lot in the intro. This is the one that I used to, uh, who I am. Hmm. Remember this one? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right here. Another mirror. But I don't like who's looking back at me. Yeah. Great song. Yeah. So, well, there we go. Oh, man, I'm excited about today, by the way. I don't know if you heard my uh, energy drink crack. Right in the beginning there, but cheers. What? You're drinking an energy drink. Let's go. Oh, yeah. A little Zion's action. Yeah, right on. B I got, yeah. I got, uh. Yeah, there you go. Ooh, coffee. Yeah, a little coffee. Ah, there you go. Miss Brown Eyes. Yeah, me and Bud talked all about coffee this morning on the greatest podcast. Yeah, it was I've great. Been a part of. Yeah. Uh, have, you've listened to a little bit of it? So yeah. Far? Well, uh, yeah, I need to, I need to listen to it all, but, um, you guys are, fire together oh man it was it was really fun i mean uh bud brought the heat uh, just the three the, how detailed he was with the three phases nice uh, the conversations that we had throughout the um the main topic there even just kind of the small talk the first 20 minutes and all the conversations and topics there just look if you're a weightlifter you're, you're going to love it. I mean, it's, it's, it's really going to help everybody out there, uh, including myself. So it was great to have Bud on this morning. And uh, man, the team's on fire. We got 40 bucks right now for the winner. Frank threw in money. I threw in money. Torres was the one that started it. He threw in the 10 bucks. Andia threw in 10 bucks. We got 40 bucks for the winner of the team challenge today. Um, no pressure, Brian. If you throw in 10 bucks, it's 50. Uh, wink, wink. But uh, so whoever wins right now, I think Dale is in the lead. Mm. Could be Lee. See what she hit in the CJ. But it's, it's between Dale Moody and Lee right now on the leaders. Uh, but we'll see if anybody can beat uh, Dale. He's at, sitting at 34. 34. Right 34. 29 in the snatch. And uh oh, I'm bad at math. What? Five in the CJ. So he snatched his percentage 34 times. Yeah, 88%. He did it uh, 29 times. And then he did 89% in the CJ five times. Yeah. Well, I lost. <laughs> you can do it, Brian. You can do it. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Let me ask you and this. Jesus inside you. Do you yeah, amen. He, he, uh, I can do all things. That's right. Let me ask all you this. John three sixteen. If you let me ask you this, do you think percentage comes into play? Like your 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 PR. Like, could you do? Could you snatch twenty nine times? Let's say one hundred and forty kilos or one hundred and twenty five kilos. Yeah, I, you you bring up a really good point. Versus like seventy five. Your yeah, you need to base the the lift you're going off of realistically. You know, on what you've hit the last, you know, five, six months. Yeah. A comeback lift. You know, for example, you bring, you bring up a good point. I'm not going to go off 175. You know, that's insane. Um, I'd go off of, you know, 140. Right. right. You know, so let me do the math on that. Um, let me see. 140 times 0.88. Mm-hmm. So yeah, 123. I tell you right now, I could crack 123 a lot of times. A lot, yeah. A lot of times. But it's just it's that weight though that's just heavy enough. It'll buck you off that bucking bull. And that's why you get one free out of jail card. Yeah. Which helps, but you know, don't miss again. So it's it's just heavy enough to make it challenging but also fun. Yeah, I think I, I gotta do eighty nine. Let me see. What are you going to go off of? You're going off of 102? 102. Yeah, 102 times 0.88. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 89K. Yeah, 89. 89K. I think 
crack out many attempts at 89. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, sure. I, I did For 15 sure. plus attempts at 102 that one day. <laughs> oh, just lock them out in the snatch. What are you going to uh, CJ 130? Yeah, 130. About, one, About 130. Times yeah. 89. So, oh, Siri's talking to me. So 115. Yeah, no Here's problem. CJ. See, I mean, I could do that good. a lot. I could do that 30 times. It is interesting. You talk high 80s in the percentage, you get a little freaked out. But then when you actually do the math, you go, wait a minute. That's like my last warm up in a meet. <laughs> sure. No, that's not even. Better. I, I mean, it, look, it's, it's going to take some time, but I could I could knock out 115 kilo of clean and jerk 50 times. Well, pff, someone's going to win the money then. <laughs> Let's go, baby. No, let's go. I'm just saying that's just grit, right? Just do it. Let's go. That's exciting. Well, let's get to it. Uh, First Corinthians chapter three. Let's go. Uh, as the journey continues from Genesis one one, uh, Brian, you want to play us in? Sure, dear heavenly Father, you are so good to us. Thank you for writing this wonderful, amazing book. This the Word of God, your words, your breathed word, just put down on paper by man for us. And that it's Come true. They're true. Every word is true. Every time we read it, it, we apply it. It's all true. And we love you. Thank you for sending the, the, the spirit of God to guide us and to lead us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for everything you've done. We love you. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. Brian, nice, beautiful prayer. Glory to God. Hey, God is good. Beautiful. I love him. Thank you. Hold on one second here. Let me just. Hey, kiddos. Daddy's on the podcast. Can we keep it down a little bit, please? Love you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, let me pull it up. I got it pulled up here. Excellent. You want me to kick it off? Kick it off. Yeah, great idea. Great, great. It's a short one. Here we go. But I, hold on, skirt, let's go back to chapter two. Mm -hmm. They obviously run together. Uh, Pastor Brett actually sometimes has some issues with the breaks in chapters. He's talked a lot about that. Mm -hmm. uh, chapter two ends by saying, but we have the mind of Christ. Amen. And then going right into chapter three, but I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people. But as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people are infants in Christ. They don't know the gospel. Mm -hmm. They know the power of God by in getting saved, but they don't know what love is and how to live by the law of love, you know. And um, so he's definitely saying this. Look, people living in the flesh, John. See that? They are living in the flesh. You know? Yeah, this is refreshing up on chapter two toward the end there again. But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Mm. And even now you are not ready yet ready for you are still of the flesh for while there is jealousy and strife among you are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way come on but when one says i follow paul and another i follow Apol apollos are you not being merely human huge that's right so is 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 Yahweh saying here, a.k.a. Paul, mm -hmm. is Paul saying that these people might be talking a big game, but they're actually have not been saved? No, no, no. They're all saved. These are all believers. But he's okay. saying he's saying some of these people, um, the, the people he's talking to, they're still living in the flesh by their feelings. Like, they're still saying, like, I'm a Baptist. No, no, no. I'm a Catholic. No, no, no. I'm a Lutheran. Right. Essentially. And yeah, I'm, I'm saying that. That's exactly right. Some follow, some follow Paul. 
No, I follow Apollos. No, I do what he says. No, I was baptized with Paulus. I did this. It's all the, the, the gospel, John, the gospel of love, the royal law of love is not of the flesh. And that's what he's saying. It is a wow. spiritual thing. That's like um, if if you talk to a the conversation the other night we had on men's group. What are they called again? Oh, uh, those who follow Calvin. <laughs> Calvinist, right? Yeah, Calvinist. One of the things they'll say is, oh, but have you read the, the, the book of Calvinism? Right. The, tenet, the five tenets of Calvinism. The Calvin they'll go to it pretty quickly. Not saying they won't go into scripture, but notice how they go into it pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, I raise my hand immediately and I say, no, 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 no. I don't do man's words. Mm -hmm. I don't follow him. I don't follow Paul. I don't follow Apollos. Right. I don't follow Brian H. I don't follow John North. <laughs> that's the, probably the most important one. That's the, that is the Matthew chapter four. That's don't I love self. I have John North my whole life and it's led me to too much destruction. Right. Um, and only by the grace of God has he guided me to where I'm at now. So, uh, and again, there's that free will versus God's plan all mixed together somehow. But um, I don't follow John North. I follow Jesus Christ. Come on, man. That's right. That's who I follow. So powerful. Well, thanks for helping me with that. It was I was having a little trouble in the first paragraph there, and um, yeah, you helped me tremendously. Well, he says, like, I, look, he says, I can't speak unto you as spiritual people because you're still carnal. Essentially, he said, you're still in the flesh, you know, and a lot of the churches nowadays, people live this way. They're still in the flesh. Look at they, what do they do when they walk up to you? Oh, I'm a Baptist. I mean, look, be a Baptist. That's fine. God bless you. And that's great. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But when you're holding to this man's thing, where is it called in here that we should be the, a Baptist where are we ever called to be, quote unquote, part of the Orthodox Church, right? No, no. Yeah, I think I mentioned it a few days ago, Brian, you make a great point of like, that's something that should be mentioned kind of later in the conversation. Yeah. You know, if it comes up, oh, what, what denomination are you? Oh, I'm a Catholic. I go to the Catholic Church. Oh, great. You know, yeah. but it seems to come up very quickly to a lot of people. It's like one of the first things they say. I'll never forget. I asked somebody, I go, how long have you been walking for, with Christ? They go, well, I'm a Catholic. And um, about 10 years ago, it's like, I, okay. <laughs> exactly. What are, <laughs> I, I asked someone the other day this too, and they, they came out and said um, something very similar of just right off the bat, what their domination was or whatever. And I just, it's always taken back a little bit. Like, oh, you know, so I, know, I think you bring a point there. I think it's just backwards. Like you said, it's okay to say, hey, I'm a Catholic. It's okay to say I'm a Baptist. Yeah. You know, it's okay to say I'm a Lutheran or whatever these things mean, but gosh, man, make sure that's like 10 minutes into the conversation. I mean, the first thing should just be God's word, Jesus, and uh, at the book of Acts. Oh, yeah. The way. Yeah. You, you're a follower. Uh, you're a follower of the Lord Jesus. Yes. Amen. Me too, man. Gosh, don't you love the Lord? Isn't he so good to us? You know, what happened? How, how did you hear about him? How did you find out? You know, the, it's about him. And that's why mm. Paul's like, this is why Paul's saying this. People are like, I, 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 I am a this. I am doing this. I do this. I, I, I. But really, it is he, he, he. We are fellow workers with him. We love him. He died for us. He gave it all so that we could have, you know, and that's really the way it is. Yeah, I remember one of the most shocking things, and I know we got to keep going, but and, I, and again, know. I'm not trying to be judgmental. I'm just saying this to to make a point here. But I never forget, I was uh, really excited. I had this great conversation with this guy who's a Christian, and really great guy. Mm -hmm. And I go, okay, I gotta ask you, bro. I gotta ask. I get excited. Give me. I got two questions for you. I go, what's your favorite book in the Bible, and who's your second favorite Bible character? Mm -hmm. And I say second, of course, Jesus is number one. Hey. Which is, who's your second? Right there, you go. Excited. I'm on pins and needles. He goes, oh, great questions. Great questions. He's getting all excited. He goes, well, first of all, uh, my favorite book outside of the Bible is Dr. Blah, 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 blah. First of all, <laughs> just skips over your questions about the Bible. Goes on about like how this Christian wrote this book about his life and like it's just 
shocking to me. Shock. That's your answer. Like your first answer to me is a, a book written by man. Shocking. I know. And there you go. There's a perfect example. Now, if you give me your, oh, Isaiah, and the person is, uh, uh, you know, Paul. Uh, now, with that said, have you read this book by Dr. Blah, 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 blah? It's really good. Okay, fine. We can have that discussion. But to be your initial answer, I think that's just a problem in religion today. Yeah, that's then that's the carnal mind thinking, you know. And so that's we we and look, we're all subject to that sometimes. We all get into that sometimes. It's not like we are all perfect, but we have to get reminded by the word of God, John. Get back into him. Get your mind in the spirit. Right? Yeah, and can I ask you a question? What are devotionals? Are those is that Bible scripture or is that what is what are those? Because so, that's another thing in yeah. Texas a lot. So, oh, you know, do you read the Bible and stuff? And one of their first questions or answers is always like, Well, I don't read the Bible, but I do my devotional every morning. It's like, yeah. what does that mean, Brian? So generally devotionals are something like this. Like let's just say I like I get an email devotional. I guess it's a devotional. Every day. I don't always read it, but it's a scripture. It's a scripture by a ministry that I like to follow and I, I, I partner with and give to them and love them and pray for them and so on. Anyway, they send the in and what, it, what some of them are, I don't know all of them, but some of them are, you have a scripture that you, you a, a verse, let's say I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So then someone will say, you see this verse, this is an amazing verse. And it, it shows that God, you know, can do things through us and we can do things through him no matter what the situation is or whatever, whatever it is. So it's like a little, a paragraph or two of encouraging, a encouraging word for life that day, but through the Bible. It's 5% Yahweh, 90, 80, uh, 95% man's words. Most of the time it's, that's what it is. Sometimes it's more, sometimes there are, there, there are like big chunks of paragraphs, but yeah. Yeah. Most of the time it's one or two scriptures and then, uh, All right, no, thank you. It's fine, but yeah, that's. I mean, look, no, that's awesome. So yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, sorry. No, hey, thank no you that's okay. Question. Hey, that's that's good. That's stick to the word. You know that nothing wrong with that. Well, that's the issue with the Moses documentary, dude. Go away. Stop. Stop it. I want to follow the story. You know. <laughs> yeah. No, I right, missed. Amen. He is risen, by the way, Will. Will Hawkinson, how we doing, baby? Yeah, you want to? You can Come keep on. going at five. Oh yeah. Uh, what? Is, what then is Apollos? What is Paul? So when he says Paul, he's calling himself out here too, right? Well, yeah. Well, not calling himself out. He's just bringing up the topics. People want to follow Paul, and people want to follow Apollos. So he's like, well, then what is Apollos? What is Paul? Right. And he, and he explains it right next to you, right here. So that's like me saying, like, I don't follow John North. I follow Christ. Well, that's exactly what I think he's going to get to. Exactly. Uh, servants. Through whom you believed as the Lord assigned to each. I planted Apollos watered. But God gave the growth. Yep. Let's go five again. Yeah, let's see. Let me, let me, let me. What then is Apollos. What is Paul? Go ahead. Yeah. Let me, I'll break it down a little bit. But basically, he's remember, we're saying he's like, Luke, you guys are struggling and y'all are bickering with each other saying, I follow this guy, Paul. And then the other guy is saying, I follow Apollos. And he's saying, right. this, is, this is a human mindset. This is not godly. Who cares? So then he goes on and says, well, then what is Apollos? The King James says, who? Who is Apollos? Who is Paul? But they are servants through whom you have believed as the Lord has assigned to each of you, right? And then he says, look, I Paul planted the seed of the gospel. I'm just adding so we can understand a little better. Paul planted the seed of the gospel. Apollos watered the gospel with more encouraging words with the scripture, but God gave the growth, meaning he's the one who revealed who Jesus was and boom. But it wasn't Paul and it wasn't Apollos. They aren't that special. They are just the ministers. That's what he's saying. Oh, so well said. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, I, I just didn't read it that well at first. No, I got uh, it. I got thank no you. Problem. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. Can I read it again? So yes, I, I don't mind at all. 
now that you've broken it down in that way. So what then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave them growth. There we go. Perfect. Very, thank you. <laughs> no, hey, look, I've read this a thousand times. You haven't. It's okay. No, thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why God says go out in two. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes three, you know. <laughs> Sometimes 300. <laughs> yeah. Let's go, baby. That's I'm right. Some 300. Mm. Uh, but what about six? What about five? What if there's only four righteous people? All right, verse seven. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything but only God who gives the growth. Oh, verse eight. He perfect. who plants, yeah, he who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. Mm-hmm. We are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. Amen. See, that's the whole thing, right? We do things with the Lord, and he plants and waters people through us. They get the word of God. They, they, get, they see Jesus. Oh, they get saved. God brings that harvest. But who are we? Just fellow workers. We're nothing, really. We're just the tool and the vessel that the Holy Ghost uses to plant and to water in the world. It's not like I'm saving you, John, ever. Just, I might have preached the gospel to you and you got born again. It wasn't me, ever. Right. I just shared the power of God and it it changed you. And so right. that's what people, but people get too up crazy about, oh, T.D. Jakes, that's my guy. Are you sure? Brother Copeland, or those are all great people. John North, you know, or look, and he, look, don't get me wrong. Um, uh, your pastor is a great man of God. And so is mine. And so am I. And so are you. But we are just laborers with the Lord together. And do we honor your pastor? Of course. He's taken the time to love the Lord and to follow his way and to get into the scripture and to follow the Holy Spirit. That's honorable. We lift him up in honor. We don't worship him. We don't bow down before him, but we love and honor him, and he has the word of God in him. But he's not God. We still I, honor God first. Yeah, you're so it's so well said, Brian. I like to say when we get to heaven, I'm going to shake King David's hand, but I'm going to bow to Jesus. But hey, you say that beautifully. But beautiful. That's exactly what Paul's saying here. I'm shaking your hand, Apollos, but we bow to God. And I'll give Mother Mary a side hug. Mother Mary. Yeah. Hi, Mother Mary. Mother of Jesus, not mother of God, mother of Jesus. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Praise the Lord. Uh, Sure. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master building, I laid a found, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. So again, Paul's doing the same thing. God has given Paul, the apostle, the the builder. He's a builder, right? He builds these people. He builds the church. He builds. And then he says here, um, verse 11, for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. It's not Paul. It's not Apollos. It's Jesus. He's the builder, the foundation layer. I love how Paul always goes back to Jesus, don't you? Oh, every every line. I love that. Mm-hmm. Verse 12 says, mm-hmm. Now if anyone builds on the foundation of gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work is that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. But if anyone, if anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. Yeah. So this is basically is your is your the things you're doing for the Lord are they in faith? Right. That's well, he's, it reminds me of like building your house on the rock. 
not the sand. Right. Building your house, doing the work for Christ, not for humans or for uh, even off, like you said, off other people of the Bible. Paul, 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 Paul. Right. Like we see in some religions. You know, it's like, no, 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 no. That's building your house on sand. Yeah. Let's build our house on the rock of Christ under the cloud of Yahweh. You know, Amen. so that the love of the spirit can land on the well next to our front door on a beautiful spring morning. Come on, baby. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's so well, true. Yeah. Well, speak that into AI. I want to see that. Uh, I want to see a picture of that. <laughs> I know, right? I just the, the wind blowing, the sun coming up. I love it. Look, it's so true, right? And uh, we all know that we do things yeah. selfishly. That's That's just stuff that'll burn up. Selfish work. Look, you can go to church, John, and, and you can and you can do the greatest things. But if you're doing it selfishly, your reward is just that. You did it. It's not a heavenly reward. But if you go and do things for people, if you do if you if you follow what the Lord says and do do them to love and honor God, not to say, look at me, I'm amazing. I preach so good, or I tithe so much, or I gave so much money, or I, I vacuumed the, 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 uh, someone's house, or I did something so well for me. When you do that, it's selfish. It's not for God. It's not for the Lord. It's not the work of the Lord. You really have to examine, like, what are you doing? Think, what is your motive? You know, God's yeah, all maybe. about motive. And you know, are your seeds that you're working on here, are they, gro- are they, growing good fruit mm-hmm. so strong that they won't be burned by fire. That's right, man. Eternal. Are they eternal? Are you saving people, you know, with eternity? Yeah. By the way, this end line is fascinating too, not to lower the bar for anybody, but if anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss. Right. And, you know, we, we, we think about, you know, like Job and some other people there, though he himself will be saved. Look at that. Yeah. Messing, falling short, making bad decisions. Maybe not putting your house necessarily on on the rock, but a right. little bit of sand, and getting washed away by human flesh, and you know, God saying here though He will be saved because He has faith, mm-hmm. but only as through fire. So maybe He's going to just really kind of have a tough life, and um, it's true, you know, and all that. But I could I I could be taking this the wrong way, but it, it seems like God's just saying like, look, He has faith. Faith, you're saved. Yes, you yeah. will be saved. If your works are not that good. Oh, um, absolutely. But, you know, it'll be through through fire, which I don't fully understand that last line there. But Well, um, well look, let's see. The through. Look at the first line. It says, if anyone's work is burned up, his work, all the things that he's done, the things that he has done, if it is was selfishness, if it was in wrongdoing, maybe he lied, cheat, steal, whatever. If that's burned up by the judgment of God, he he loses all that time. He loses all that effort. He loses no he gets no reward. Though himself is saved, John, right? He's in heaven. The the the, mm-hmm. the work of his life is judged and he lo- gets no reward for the stuff that is lost and burned up. It was selfish. But he only loses it all through fire. He is saved, but he had to hit all yeah, the f- a- through fire, the fire it, of his life. It, 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 Go ahead. I was going to say, this is like, just a lot of Samson. Yeah, exactly. You know, at the end there, like he saved, he saved Israel. He loved God. You That's know, good. At the end, he, you know, really had that great comeback. And then basically through fire, yeah. the temple falling on him and, you know, smoke and fire and everything that just got crumbled there to save his people. You know, that's how he kind of went into heaven, or I should say Abraham's bosom at the time. That's so good. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, look, I mean, look at 16. See, he says it right here. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy and you are that temple. Right? Mm-hmm. So even though look, even though your temple is destroyed, you're still the, you're still God's. You're still the temple. You don't have, you, just because you don't live a perfect life doesn't mean you're going to hell. You know, there's a little pe- a lot of people who think that. But we, we are, are the, God's. Say again. 
Oh, you said that like, people are gods? No, no, no. Well, yes, we are gods, people, meaning we are we own we're owned by him. Yeah, if I if, if I said we if I mentioned if I accidentally said we are gods, quote unquote, no, 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 we're not gods. We are in the God class, and the Bible in Psalms says that we are little gods. We're not God, you know, but we mm-hmm. are in the you know He He lives in us. Right. Um, but yeah, no, absolutely, we're not God. We're not gods, unless you want to bow down. No, I'm just kidding. That's horrible. Yeah. No way. We are. We follow the the Most High, you know. But yeah, so we are the temple of God. I love that. And that's a good Mm -hmm. way to think, by the way. Every day, if you get up in the morning and you think, I am the temple of God, kind of changes how you do things, right? He dwells in you. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's it's, it's crazy. So look at verse 18. He says this. He, He keeps going. He says, let no one deceive himself, right? If anyone among you thinks that he is wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise for mm, the wisdom. Yeah, exactly. Look yeah. What it says. Talk about, go ahead. About this last chapter about being unwise, quote unquote. Yeah. You know, I do quote unquote, like, you know, saying like no man is wise. Your wise is actually means you're foolish. It's it's the Bible that's wise. It's God that's wise. It's the Holy Ghost that's wise. Yeah, yeah. Anytime you think you're above anybody, wiser than anybody else, or you're even wiser than God's Word, oh. you know, you're making it complicated for people like preaching or whatever it may be. Be careful with that. Boy, no kidding. You know, here's Pastor Brett, PhD, Doctor of Bible Study, mm-hmm. double master's degree, studied his whole life. He could sit up there on a stool preach the word of God for an hour and a half and you get everything he's saying. So simple. Everything he's anybody can hear it. So powerful. That so simple. It's powerful. Amen. That, John. It's not the big words and all that stuff. No, you nailed it. That is exact. And look, he, I love that guy. He's a great example of that. Yep, Very knowledgeable. Good. Look, he's got a lot of time in, 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 in books, in the Bible around people of God. But yeah, does he go up there and say, everybody listen to me because I'm amazing? No, no. He says, let's mm. let's listen to the word of God. Let's listen to the wisdom of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? I love that. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. You know, pretty much a celebrity pastor. It's almost like you can categorize him that. It's kind of crazy. He's not walking out with a nice suit on, walking around with a microphone in his hand. No more stool. <laughs> like, well, well, what, 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 what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's like, no, he's just on a stool. Just put the Bible still. Nothing's yeah. Changed. You know, as 200,000 people on YouTube watch every service. You know, it's crazy. It's the same thing. It's just word, 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 word. I am nothing. God is everything. Yeah, literally. I love it. I love how the ministry has has gotten so big and just by basically reading the Bible and teaching the Bible. And that's the way it should be. I love that. Well, it's all glory to the Bible. Yeah, glory to the Lord. Yeah. You know, that's the, glorif- the glorifying thing. You know, it's not really even like not to downplay Brett, but it's not he's you know, he's he's it's it's not he's not walking the stage and throwing his hands and um, probably being more like me of like being energetic and bringing you in and telling these crazy stories. And you're like, oh, this guy's great. This, no wonder there's 300,000 people watching this YouTube video, you know, no, it's just kind of an older guy that's overweight. He needs to lose some weight that's sitting on a stool reading the Bible. Yeah. And and for the word now of course he's really good obviously i can go on i'm not trying to downplay him but you're right for the most part that's what it is mm-hmm. it's first for the word yeah oh he's a, he's talented god has anointed him but of course he it's the, his content is the bible man it's the word of god i love that so go listen to him by the way athe creek on youtube amazing uh let's keep going for verse 19 for the word for the wisdom of this world is foolish or folly with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. So let no one boast in men, for all things are yours. Whether Paul or Paulus or Cephas, 
or the world, or life, or death, or the present, or the future, all are yours. And you are Christ's, and Christ's is God's. Go ahead. Okay, well, I want to talk about 23 there. Um, but I, I love this right here, because it says, the Lord knows in the thoughts of the wise, mm -hmm. and they are... Verse 21, so let no one uh, boast in men. Uh, here we go. For all things are yours. Yeah. For all things, whether Paul, Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or the present, or the future, all are yours. Let me, here's how, here's how I take that right there. Yeah. The only thing that is truth, that is light, on this planet is the Bible. Mm. Everything else is flawed. Everything else is corrupt. I like that. Everything else is short. God's word that we have is everything. We have that. We have that not only inside as Christians as the body of the temple, but we have that in our hands for $10 at Walmart or for free on Google, right here in front of our eyes. Nobody can take the word from us. They can try. They do in other countries. I pray people escape that. God helps them. You know, the church is underground in China, etc. North Korea. Yeah. The horrible tragedies that happen there when they find a Bible in someone's home, etc. I love it. So the enemy will try, but we have life. We have all things in our hand. And you would have said, what about family, John? What about family? Family is the Bible. See, the Bible, God's word is the list. Well, God, family, weightlifting, PlayStation 5, and eating good food. That's my list. No, God is the list. Everything should be biblical. Everything should be the walk of Christ. Amen. You don't even need God at first. Just say family. Da, 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 da. What about God, John? You never mentioned God. God is the list. Mm -hmm. The Bible is the list. Being a biblical man with a family is of the Bible. Come on. You know, and so I just look at this as nobody can take this Bible from me. Nobody can take what I have is everything, and that is God's word. Mm hmm. Amen. I love it. Yeah, well, I do apologize to Christ if I'm off on what he means by this, what Yahweh wrote here. Um, and maybe I can get another take from you, Brian. Yeah. I, I want Yahweh to know that kind of that's how I initially took what Nothing wrong with that. That's great. Like, I mean, I, I mean, I see it. This, I see it in similar. I, but he, I see also he's talking about the guy. You know, he's talking about. Remember, they're they're trying to honor Paul. Like Paul's my guy only, or Paul, Apollos is my guy, or Cephas is my guy. And so what Paul's saying here mm -hmm. is what I see is uh, look at twenty one. He says, um, "Don't let anyone glory or boast in men, for all things are yours." And what you know, Paul, Paul is yours as a teacher. He's a servant to you. Paul, Paulus, is, 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 is any of these pastors and ministers of God, they are servants to you. The world is your servant. Life is serv to serve you, right? The future serves you. All are yours, and you are Christ's, and Christ is God. So I see it similar, where the Bible is yours. You can't, no one can take it from you. But these other people, they are yours as servants of God. They are your. They are to serve the, the body. You aren't supposed to um, honor and, and and serve them, right? Of course, you can serve people, but that's my. I think he's just saying. Well, he's saying similar things, but just focusing more on people. Don't just follow someone. Follow Christ, and Christ is God's. You know. Yeah. No. Thank you, Brian. That's definitely mm -hmm. more on track what Yahweh means there. So thank you for that. But you're look, you're not uh, wrong. The word is yours. No one can take it. If this is what the scripture showed you, the Lord, the Holy Spirit showed you here, that's a beautiful thing. Because I didn't see that. But the word can't be taken from you. It's yours. All is yours. Right? And you're Christ. So don't so don't I I totally I'm with that man. That's no, a that's no, a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Let's break this down on 23. It's a big one here. Uh, and you are Christ's. Mm -hmm. So I, let's pause there for a second. Like Christ lives inside of us. You know, it's, 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 
never really looked at it that way. If we are Christ's, yeah, like as I walk, Christ walks. You know, um, it's true. Yeah, it's like he lives inside this. You know, and, and, and so and then it says comma and Christ. So we now we know Christ is inside of us. Is this is by the way possibly a huge I am I am Alpha and Omega Alpha and Omega Christ is God verse here again. Look at this, but just kind of done in a very beautiful way mm -hmm. by our our King Yahweh. Amen. Jesus, right here, ready. And Christ, so we know that Christ is in us, is God's plural. Now, I know at first you're like, wow, plural? What in the world with a capital G? Holy smoke and biscuits. We haven't seen this ever. But Christ is God. And God is inside of us. Or Christ is God and Christ is inside of us. So if Christ and God and the Holy Spirit are one, the Godhead, mm -hmm. then when we walk, God walks as well. Amen, John. You know, I mean, look at that. Christ is God. Now take out the apostrophe. I'm not trying to change the Bible here. Lord, forgive me. I'm just saying, if you take out the plural, Christ is God. Now add the plural in, as Yahweh wrote, Christ is God's Meaning still, it's the same meaning. Christ is God. Plain as day here, right? Um, John 8, 58. Within all of us that believe in him. Yeah. So that's my take on that, Brian. I want to get you the mic on this. Yeah. Um, well, the, the apostrophe S is, the, is an ownership. I, mean, I, would, I would never call myself a God, of course. No, no. But the, Go ahead, sorry. No, no, you're right. The, it, uh, Christ... Apostrophe S, that's that's an ownership, not a plural. So it's saying you are owned by Christ, and Christ is owned by God. They are they are one. We are one oh, with, with oh, Christ. Okay. We are one with Christ, owned by Christ. We have a covenant with with the Lord Christ, with Jesus Christ, and Christ oh, is God is God's as well. He is he has a covenant. He he made a covenant with God. We he we read in the book of Hebrews. We also read it in the in the um, in Matthew in the Last Supper, and nice. he also is God because in the book of Hebrews and in Psalms he made him he 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 is God when he rose from the dead and so on. So, um, but I think it's an ownership thing. So yeah, I see you're saying okay, I was I think I was probably reading that wrong. It's okay, you know, I, I might have had a, a point there as well. Um, let's pull this up in King James. And then after that, if, if, in my opinion, Brian, if we go King James on this, let's go Greek on this. Yeah, we can't. It's the same thing, by the way, in King James, it says, uh, you are Christ and Christ is God's same thing. And then I'll, I'll go to the Greek and say what it We're says here. Both, both saying it, it's probably the same. I mean, yeah, it probably yeah. is, but yeah. It's in verse in chapter six. He says this. He says uh, something that kind of confirms this. He says, "You are bought with a price, right? We are bought with a price, meaning we are owned. We are Christ's." So, mm -hmm. okay. The Greek says this. Let's see. It says, "Uh, where is it? Oh, and what? and uh, it's not plural. It's possessive. Okay, possessive. Yeah." what you were saying brian then she came in here on the chat and says it is saying christ belongs to god exactly yeah it's ownership not not plural and the thing is that like in the greek it says that here it says um the things okay. to come all yours you in verse 23 you now of christ christ now of god right so it's the same thing you are of christ basically you are in christ you are his and Christ is of God, right? Yes, Christ is God's. Yeah, same thing. But the Greek says it a little bit differently, but it's a, it's the same. Greek says it better. Yeah, yeah. You are of God. You are of Christ. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. The English is our English is kind of gross. It doesn't work all the time. The English, say, the Greek yeah. language is amazing, and so is the Hebrew. That's why God used them. Say it in Greek one more time, Brian. Yeah. It says it like this: You now. Of Christ, 
Christ now of God. Yeah. Oh, that that that's very different in my opinion. Why is King James messing with it like that? I mean, I, I get it. And Christ is God's. I now understand. Well, this is why ESV, is... ESV did the same thing. Yeah, ESV did the same thing. But I, I don't get why they... I'm not coming at the King James or ESV right now. I get it. Yeah, 100%. you could. But I don't get the translation of where like the Greek is so much better. I don't know why they just didn't stick to the Greek yeah. completely. I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. I, I mean, I don't know what, you know, thank God for the translators because we have it, but it's a definitely, uh, um, you know, mm -hmm. it's definitely, I don't know. I like, the, what, I like what, the Greek. Real quick, what about NLT? Let's look. NLT says, You're fast on that. Yeah. yeah, of course, of course. Um, NLT is this. It says, uh, I'm pulling it up right now, but I have the greatest internet in the world. Verse 23 says this, you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God. Way easier to understand. Way <laughs> So it completely takes away my initial point. Yeah. And Christ belongs to God. Yeah. This is, you know, for a room two kid like me, it can be a little tough right here. And Christ mm -hmm. is God. A little question mark. Like, wait a minute. Now that now I have great men and women in my life, like obviously my wife and you, as my brother, to guide me to be like, oh okay, yeah. You know, um, that's like I felt like well, the Ethiopian, you know, walking up to Peter, Peter, right? Yep. Yeah, Peter. No, no, Philip. This... Or Philip. There, yeah. shot. Uh, what does this mean? Well, let me tell you what it means. You know, and, and so that's what it's about, right there. I love that. Yeah. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Well, there you go. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, so again, just be careful on that one because I like to keep my sword sharp. And in these new translations, dude, a hater can take 23 and spin that in weird ways. Or not even just a hater, but somebody with an odd religion. You know, I'm like, God, I am God. See, it's like, whoa, whoa. First of all, mm -hmm. LT got up better. <laughs> they look up NLT, and then you could say, "Well, it's just NLT; it's another translation." We'll go to the Greek. Go to the Greek. Right. The Greek, but much different. You are wrong. You're not a god. <laughs> um, and so, just all of us in this Bible study together, I think we need to yeah. sometimes look for things that people can spin. Know the correct answer, of course, and then just be ready in the world to defend the Bible, of course, if someone tries to. Uh, Unappropriately spin it. Yeah, that's why it's a good thing to every believer should, you know, be able to now that we have these tools, go back to the Greek. Well, what do you mean? I don't want to do all that. That's too super committed, super Christian. Well, not really. Do you not believe this stuff? Or do you not really care about it? I like how the message Bible says this. All of you, all of it is yours. You are privileged to be in union with Christ, who is in union with God. I love that version. There we go. That's beautiful. So no, he, that one and the Greek, of course, um, really good there. So, but but it's all good. It's all good. You know, that's uh, it's God's word. So Second Timothy three sixteen. Well, I I think uh, let's see. Oh, you prayed it in. Yeah, you, yeah, I did. It's your turn. I don't. Okay. Oh, dear Jesus, um, thank you so much for chapter three. Wow. Uh, we are just absolutely blown away by your words, mm -hmm. and um, we are so grateful to have study today, uh, reading chapter three, walking it, talking about it, studying it, breaking it down, discussing it uh, as we sharpen our sword, um, not for our, not just for ourselves, but for other people, to help people to go out in the world and be a light, and uh, um, if evil comes upon us, are sort of sharp because we have your word. And so thank you for that. Thank you for um, uh, guiding us here as we're your temple. And um, just all the great conversations we've had. Um, give us a, uh, keep us safe today. And uh, we love you so much. To the, to the Father, to Jesus, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.